Hi, my name is Neil and welcome back to today's episode of Retro For You. And on today's episode, we're going to be building one of these here. Now, this is a blue scuzzy and yes, it's a version 1.1. And I know a lot of people saying, why are you building the 1.1? Well, unlike the version 2, which is up here, it is a hell of a lot easier. And to be honest, I just need it to test for these Macintoshes behind me. Because something like this, you can just plug in the back and load an OS is absolutely brilliant i'm going to show you how to build this today when you're restoring and building retro computers sometimes you need a little more help than spare parts sometimes you need a new board that's where pcb way come in they produce high quality custom pcbs perfect for replacement boards prototypes or even your own retro products. Not only can you order your own boards, but PCBWay also has a huge library of community projects to browse from retro computers to modern gadgets. You'll find loads of inspiration, so pop along to www.pcbway.com and check them out. So when you finish browsing and you find the project you'd like to build, then all you gotta do is click the button, add to cart. So what we've done, we've ordered this board in here, which is two layer board and it auto populates most of the settings for you make sure you select your country here on the right to your correct country and the important bit now to select is your quantity it's always a minimum of five now here is the important bit here for me the solder mask color also down here you have the options for smd stencil if you're doing surface mount stuff and also an assembly service if your solder is not up to scratch as you can see the color board is actually excellent and the quality is second to none. Great job, PCB Way. Did they also mention not only does PCB Way do boards, they also do 3D printing, which is great for projects like this when you need a case. But also they do CNC machining, which again is great for other projects just like this. So whether you're into repairing a retro classic or just building something brand new, PCB Way is the way to go. So check out the link down below. And on that note, Let's crack on. So as I said before, why I like this build is it's a nice, easy build to do on a Sunday morning. So what we have here is a DB25 male connector, four resistor networks, a SD card reader or SD card slot, whatever you want to call it, a diode, a couple of headers, a blue pill, make sure you get the correct one, and also the main board here. So that's it basically. So what I'm going to do, I'll take you through step by step of how to do this, how to program it and how to modify your Mac Plus board as well if you want it to power off the board. So the first thing we're going to install is the SD card slot. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply some flux along these pads and then I'm just going to get my tweezers and try and position this as best as I can. I think that looks about there. So hopefully now I can just solder this in one of the pads at the sides. isn't going anywhere so what we can do now is we can just proceed to solder the pins so that to me looks good now next we have a diode which is a 1n5818 and then install it make sure that the line is facing the line on the diode so it's as simple as that, we just press that in. And then it's just a matter of snipping the leads off, which we will keep because they're always good to have. Next we have two lots of resistor networks, some 220s, 
Also, make sure when you're fitting these, you see that dot there that it lines up with the square. So the 220 is at the back here, so they will go in just like so. Like I said before, make sure the dot, you can see there, lines up with that square. Now the ones at the front are 330s. Now they have a dot, but it's a grey dot, which you probably work out there. And they, again, go the same way. Just like so. So we just pop them in as easy as that. Now all I need to do is to apply a bit of tape and take them in place ready for soldering. So all I'm gonna do is stick some tape over the top. It just helps hold these into place. Next we're going to add the 24 pin port here and that should just slot into place and once it's in place again we'll just apply some tape. to help hold it in place and again like last time we'll flick it over we'll solder the big earth pads here first and then that will help hold hold the thing in place It is actually taking shape. Now, what we need to do next is to program the blue pill. So it's onto the Windows PC and I'll show you how to sort that. Now this is where we're gonna actually flash this blue pill up and actually get it programmed with the right software. So it acts as a SCSI hard drive. Now the one I'm using it is this one here, which is the ST-Link version two, but there is also the USB version here. Now. I always tend to use this one because I like it because you can see the light etc and it seems to program a bit better than the other one but they both do work and they both can be bought quite cheaply because I don't think these are originals these are actually copies but you can see there that there's a pin out for mine well mine especially I don't whether well, everyone's different probably the genuine one is different but what you need is four wires what you need to find is is you flip your board over here you will see you have the ground the SW click, the SWO and the 3 volt. So this is already wired up properly. So what I need to do is to add the voltage here next to the ground. Now next the SWIO, which happens to be pin 7 on mine, which is the white one. And last but not least, the brown one, which is the SW click. So just like that. That is now done and ready to go. So to get this flash, what you need to do is to download this software called the Blue Scuzzy Firmware Flasher. Now I find this quite easy to use, so it's absolutely brilliant. So just load it, as I said. Next, what you gotta do before you do anything is to move these jumpers across here. So just two jumpers, and you just basically move these across. Just like so, see so you on the forward pins there. Next, plug in your USB to power it on, and it should beep like that. So all you got to do is press 
number two first to prepare a blank blue pill. So press number two. Of course it's decided not to work now. Okay, now press, it says connect it basically. Make sure the jumpers are further away from the reset button, which we've done, and then press any key. And you should see it will flash like that and it will program it. So now we've done that, what you need to do next is unplug this power, unplug these cables, move the jumpers back, important. Then you need to connect a USB. Right, that's more like it. And then it should automatically, like that, flash its firmware. And if it says happy scuzzing at the bottom, it's all done. Don't worry if it only says 97%. It sometimes always says that. So that's it. That's ready now to be soldered into the main device. And hopefully it should work. The last bit of the build now, which is just apply the blue scuzzy. Now all you've got to make sure is you sold it the right way. It says USB there. Make sure the USB is pointing that away. So this is a case of 3D printed. It should hopefully fit in here. What's next to do is we're going to get a logic board. I'm going to show you how to modify it so that you can power this basically without having to plug in the usb because normally you'd have to plug in the usb to power it on the macintosh plus because there's no power but i'll show you it's quite an easy mod now this is the diode mod i was talking about now cr1 is very rarely ever populated so what you need to do is desolder those pads and fit a diode now the one i'm going to fit is a 1n4001 now that will allow power to go through this port and then power the blue scuzzy externally. It saves you basically having to plug in a power supply. It just makes it so much cooler. So I recommend anybody that's building a blue scuzzy, they've got a Mac Plus, make sure you do this mod. Now it's quite simple. Like I say, all you gotta do is desolder these pads. As you can tell, they are now done. Now we're just gonna bend this diode over. So it's as simple as that. Then all you got to do is to cut the legs off and as easy as that that diode mod is done and installed you can see it there now so that will now provide power to the port which will then allow it to boot what we do now is we'll get this in a mac and get it tested so we've got the mac we've got the blue scuzzy there that we made it's turning on we'll just turn the mac on so you can see what it's doing to prove it's got no floppy disk in there so what have we got? Now this takes a bit of time to actually boot to the disk icon because it's got four meg in it. So it's got to do the memory check. So much, much later. There you go. So you can see we've got the mouse icon and we've got the disk flashing. Moment of true time. I'm just going to plug this in hopefully and try and do this three hour back. About, there you go. We just plugged in. I managed to do that. That was quite skillful that was. I was trying to do it while I was still looking at the camera. So let's just turn this on and see what happens. 
So at the moment we're greeted with the familiar memory test, which seems to take an age with four meg. So hopefully you can see that now that has started to boot and welcome to Macintosh already and it's booted to the desktop with the hard drive there. That is absolutely amazing. So I can use this now for when I'm repairing these Macs because generally I have a lot of trouble with the floppy disk. So I'm going to end that video there now. I just wanted to do this because I wanted to show you how good these are to build and they're quite fun to build as well and very handy. Now I know there's a new or singing dancing one out there. Maybe you're going to build one of them soon with the Wi-Fi, etc. I do want to have a play with one of them, to be honest. Don't forget, if you're new here, then please hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to drop me a comment down below, even if it's hello. And check out my YouTube buddies. You've got a like to Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Retro Refix, and Joseph Retro Bits. They all do great things. There's some good Xbox stuff going on with 8-Bit Retro Refix. If you need into Xbox 360s, He's the guy you need to see. He seems to know so much about them things. In fact, I'm going to have a go at one on a live stream one day, I think, which should be fun. So make sure you join us for that. Big thank you to PCB Wave for sponsoring this video and a big thank you to the people that paid a 99p a month subscription to my channel, which helps keep the lights on in the shed. So on that note, I shall see you next time on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.